What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here. Today we're going to be doing another video about heat. So last week we did a video where we compared a Noctua NH-D15S air cooler to a Corsair H115i liquid cooler. So basically air versus liquid or an all-in-one liquid cooler. And what we found was there was really no difference on a stock i7-8700K that was overclocked to 5 gigahertz. The reason for that, I suspected at the time, was that there was just an inability of the chip itself, the i7 processor itself, to shed its heat because of the way that the thermal paste and the IHS, the heat spreader on top of the chip, was installed. So I promised you guys last week that we would take another look at this test, but with a delitted chip. And that's what we're doing this week. So I've delitted the chip. And just speaking of the delitting process, I got to say, this is a way easier thing than you might think it is. Uh, I did a lot of research. I looked online for other people who had done it. I looked for instructions and what to use, and I'll put uh, some links down below to the products I used. And I want to thank On Air PC for actually sending me the Rocket Cool delitting kit. It really worked wonderfully. It was much easier than you might suspect. Uh, I actually did two processors. The first one took a little longer, probably about an hour, um, just because I was unfamiliar with the process. But the second one, after doing the first one, it was 20 minutes to 30 minutes total. It was really a simple process. And as long as you're careful while you're doing it, and as long as you're careful when you're applying liquid metal thermal paste, then you should be fine. So I'll put a link down in the description to the products I used. Um, but this is a really interesting test. So initially, the problem I suspected with thermal testing was that I could not get enough heat off of the processor through the thermal paste in the IHS to actually see a difference between the all-in-one water cooler and the air cooler. So I re-ran the test with the delitted chips. And I gotta say, the delitting process is well worth your time. I'm going to go over some of the results here. So with the Corsair 280 millimeter AIO, my max CPU package temp was 57 degrees. That's 22 degrees lower than it was with the lidded chip or before I delitted the i7-8700K. That is dramatic. I ran that test for about an hour and 20 minutes to allow for the water in the radiator to kind of come to a consistent temperature. Uh, but after that hour and 20 minutes, the max temp I saw on the CPU package was 57 degrees. Now the max core temp, the highest temperature I saw on a single core of that six core processor was 74 degrees with the AIO. That's 22 degrees lower than with the stock chip. Now, the Noctua, with two fans installed, the highest package temperature I saw was 57 degrees. And the highest single core temperature I saw was 73 degrees. So that's a difference of 21 degrees and 20 degrees based off a stock chip. Those are the highest temps it reached. With one fan installed on the Noctua, how I normally run the Noctua D15S, I saw a maximum temperature of the CPU package at 59 degrees, 20 degrees lower than what I saw on the stock chip. The highest core temp I saw was 75 degrees, 21 degrees lower than the stock chip. So, what did we learn here today? Well, we learned that we can reduce 20 degrees off the temps of an i7-8700K by delitting it, a somewhat cheap and fairly easy to do thing for your processor. So if you're, if you're worried about your temps on your i7-8700K or a similar processor, basically any of the newer Intel chips, uh, this is a really worthwhile thing to do. It's much more beneficial than changing your cooler. Basically, it doesn't matter if you're going with an air cooler or a all-in-one water cooler or even going with a custom loop. The biggest thing you can do is delid your chip to get lower temperatures. It's really a dramatic change. What we saw in the differences between an AIO and an air cooler was, again, basically nothing. The Noctua does a wonderful job of dissipating heat, and I have enough airflow in this case to allow that air cooler to do what it needs to do. 
Having two fans helps a little bit. Having one fan still does the job with the deleted chip. The difference between a one fan Noctua cooler and a 280 millimeter AIO was about two degrees on the package and about one degree on the max CPU core temp. So really not a big deal. And you can further reduce your temperatures on the Noctua by adding another fan. So really the difference between having a 280 millimeter AIO and a fairly large uh, air cooler is aesthetics, price, you know, things that don't necessarily have to do with thermals. I suppose if your case is set up in a way that it doesn't provide good airflow for an air cooler, but would for a radiator, you may be locked into one or the other. But in my case, it really just didn't make a difference. The, by far, the most dramatic change was to actually delid the processor. Didn't matter if I was using an AIO or an air cooler. The way to reduce temps was to actually put better thermal paste on the processor itself. And everything else is based on price, aesthetics. If, if you like the look of an AIO, then go with an AIO. If you like the look of a air cooler, go with the air cooler. I like the air cooler because it, of its simplicity and its reliability and the fact that the Noctua unit is very, very quiet, especially with just one fan installed. So I got to say, I'm pretty surprised by these results. I didn't really see it coming. The fact that um, the results are basically the same between air and water uh, was kind of shocking to me. Now, I do want to mention that with water, because I did such a long test on it, what you see is that the, the temperatures kind of slowly ramp out up and then even out. But if you're constantly you know, using short bursts of intense processing power, then the water temp isn't ever going to kind of reach its maximum temperature, right? So your CPU is probably going to stay cooler overall. So in that instance, then an AIO may be the way to go. But for me, where silence is a big concern for, for my computers because I'm streaming and making videos and I need quiet in my office, you know, the Corsair liquid cooler came with some very loud fans on it um, compared to the Noctua, which is nearly dead quiet, even if I'm running the fan at 100%. So you can potentially, depending on usage, get lower temps from the Corsair. But on a long test, using A to 64 like I did in a temperature-controlled environment, all the testing was done at 72 degrees in this room, um, ambient temperature, there was really no difference. So in use cases like mine, where I tend to use my computer for long periods of time pretty heavily, the AIO doesn't really make a whole lot of difference because it pretty much just hits its maximum water temperature and stays there until I'm done streaming or gaming or whatever I'm doing. But if your workloads tend to be a little more peaky, you may see some more some more benefit from a water cooler than what I saw in this testing using Ida 64 for long periods of time. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. I got to say I'm pretty surprised by the results. Um, I did end up returning the Noctua back into the case with one fan. Uh, having the quietest computer I can is really important to me because of what I do. Uh, but really, you can't go wrong. If you want to use an AIO, you want to use an air cooler, go for it. But Deleting that chip makes a lot of sense.